Hi, and welcome back to the Mini Machine Shop. Sorry I haven't done a video in a while. I've been kind of preoccupied. I went on Craigslist a week ago and found a Kennedy toolbox for $20 and said, well, what the heck. So I bought it and I've been refurbishing it slowly. Kind of, kind of coming out nice. Kind of is and kind of isn't, but had to degrease a lot of it. And the drawers are all nice, but when I opened it up, yeah, all the felt inside was gone. So I had to redo all the drawers. And that, that was not fun because the felt that they had in there was glued in everywhere. I mean, they just covered it with glue and put it in. So. I had to go in there with a Dremel tool and a wire brush and just felt was flying everywhere, <laughs> made a mess. So I got it all out of there and I got all the glue sanded down so it was all flat, nice clean metal again. And I went to the fabric store and I was lucky though, I was walking down the first aisle and hey, whoa, there was this felt and I'm looking at it going, this isn't felt and the sign says it's wolf. And that's evidently what they're putting in all these is, well, it's expensive, it's 10 bucks a yard, but um, thank God for wives and 50% off coupons. So I did a pretty good job. It almost looks like factory when I was done with it. But. So I don't know whether they want to keep it or just put it back on Craigslist for maybe 40 50 dollars and let it go. Maybe build my own out of wood or something. But in any case, this video, I want to... Um, talk about what I went through in this black magic world of knurling. Uh, did a lot of research on YouTube, found a lot of videos, and none of them seemed like they were right. I just was not getting a knurl. And went on even just the internet, different sites where they had charts, tables, this, this diameter, you use this for this pitch. And so I'll show you what I discovered, which was pretty good, but um, I'll show you the final outcome. So let me reposition the camera so you can see what I'm doing. All right, let's see if we can do this. Now, like I said before, I did a lot of research on watching videos on YouTube and the internet and all this different stuff, but I saw this one guy's video, and this kind of made sense. What he did was, uh, here's one of my knurls. What he did was he took a knurl and he ran it over an ink pad and then he rolled it out, giving him all the little lines that are on the knurl. Um, I did the same thing, but I just used a marker, marks a lot, and then rolled the edge. So here I have all the little lines that are on the knurl. What he said to do in his video was just pick two points of a reasonable distance apart. So I picked here and here. And what you do, oh, first of all, he's counted this out in groups of five. So if you have, man, it took me a little while to figure out where one is. If you start here and you go one, two, three, four, five, that would be one again for the next five. Or you can go one, two, three, four, five, and then this is one. So I grouped them all in five, counted them out, and then he said pick two points, like I said, and measure it with your calipers. And for this one, I came up with 2.934. And then count how many little neural lines there are in there so you can do it easily by groups by fives so this came up with 75 so you divide it by 75 and you wind up with 0 0.03912 so you're going to have a neural a line every 39 thousandths that made sense so then I'm not sure why he did this but he said okay let's take the 0 0.03912 and let's divide it by pi. And you wind up with 0 0.0125, which makes his magic number here for everything. So now that you have these numbers, what you do is you take the diameter of your working material that you've got right now that you're going to knurl, measure the diameter with a pair of calipers, and divide that by the magic number. 
0.0125. And what that's going to do is it's going to equal a regular digit, I'll put a circle around it, followed by some fraction. In. Now you just you need to make the, the diameter even, so you drop off the fraction, you take the x, the large digit that there is there, and you multiply that times the magic number, 0, 1, 2, 5, and that's going to give you what you, diameter you need to cut with, the cutting diameter. That you need to turn it down to, and then you know. So that made sense. And I took a piece of aluminum, finished it off so it's a nice, clean, square, flat surface. I calipered it, ran that diameter through this formula, turned it down to what it said I needed to have as a cutting diameter and I did the knurl and it came out okay. Um, these three are the actual um, cuts that were made. But when you look at it from a distance it looks fine. But when you get close up using a, an eye loop, this is a 10, 10x eye loop made by oh, pencils rolling away. Bosch and Loam. And I highly recommend you get one of these because this is really equivalent to a microscope. You can get in really tight and see a lot of detail. I use it um, a lot for um, the lathe tools to, to look at the cutting tips and you can see scratches and all kinds of things in it. So it's a really good magnifier. But you get down and you look at this and what you see is that the, um, the actual dome on it has some kind of a crush point in it and the surfaces are all just kind of messed up. They're rough, including the valley is rough on it. So I, it's a nice knurl, but it's just not there. So I thought this was a good formula until I tried it. So what I wound up doing is, Dave, you're an engineer. Why do you keep looking at the internet and every place to figure this out? Just figure it out for yourself. So what I did was, all right, so I've got this run out like this. What I did was, first, you got to look at this and you got to figure out, well, what's important about this thing? You're going to have two diameters. You're going to have your actual neural, and then you're going to have what you're going to neural. And I guarantee you they're going to be two different diameters. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that the teeth on this guy are in sync with this in rotation and that the teeth line in, wind up in the same groove every time. Um, for instance, if you have a surface like this, you want the tooth to land at point X. And you want it to land there every time, either this tooth or another tooth on the neural if you're in sync you want it to land right here. Because what's going to happen is the first time it lands here, it's going to make a dent. The next time it lands in the exact same spot, it's going to make a deeper dent. And you're going to have nice smooth walls and you're going to start getting a nice pounded, flat, smooth bottom. So now how do you get this in sync with this? First of all, I asked myself what, there's two surfaces actually here. Um, let me draw, how am I going to draw this? Dink, dink, and sort of like that. <laughs> There's another tooth over there. There's two surfaces. There's this diameter. Oops, I actually drew that wrong. You're going to have this diameter, and you're going to have this diameter. Which one counts? This one's the one that counts, because this one is going to be hitting the surface at the same spot every time, and it's just going to go deeper and deeper. But it's basically this diameter is what you're concerned with. So what I did was I calipered this diameter, and I forgot what it came up with. Oh, yeah. Uh, from the diameter, you can figure out the circumference of it. There's simple math for that. And the circumference of this was 1.963. So I took the caliper and I set it for 1.963, and I put it down on this piece of paper. And lo and behold, with the eye loop, the caliper is landing exactly on neurals lining up perfectly with it so that tells me that something's going right here so far <laughs> and so what I did then was I just counted the number of neurals that were in there and it came up with 65 so if you take this and you divide by 65 and that number makes sense too who would make a neural that's 66 or 67.2 or something like that 
So if you take that and you divide by 65, you get 0 0.0302, which tells me that every 30 thousandths there is an Earl. And this 2 is probably insignificant, but... Um, so the diameter of this part needs to be a multiple of that. So I don't know why this other stuff was done, but what you're going to do is you're going to take the diameter of the material that you're about to knurl, you're going to divide it by 0 0.0302, and it's going to give you um, x again with a fraction. Now you just take the x and you multiply it times 0 0.0302, and you get your cutting diameter. And that makes sense because you want your diameter to be an even part of where every neural is going to show up. So I wound up cutting, finishing off another piece of aluminum, cleaning it down, calipered it, ran it through this formula, turned it down to the final cutting diameter, ran a neural, and I got a, I haven't cleaned it up much, but I got a beautiful neural. You get down in here with the eye loop, I don't even know if you can see it in the camera, but uh, you get down in there with the eye loop, the, bo the bottoms are all clean, the top has a point, the surfaces are all good. This is a beautiful neural. By the way, I need to mention that I'm doing this with the scissor neural that I made in a previous video I showed that. So, I mean, this to me is simple and easy, and I ran, I did five different ones with this, it's not this part, but I got another piece of a rod over there. I ran it five times, this being one time, and every time at a different diameter, I got a beautiful looking surface. So, leave comments, um, and also, if you can, leave suggestions if you want me to do videos on anything else. Till then, see you later.